Hey friends, so today is Friday, and typically what you would hear me say is Happy Friday. But I've given this some thought, and I think that just like the church sets aside the word Alleluia until Easter Sunday, I'm gonna set aside a word that I use every single Friday in multiple ways, Friday. I'm gonna set that aside until the Friday after Easter. That will again give me another opportunity. And keep in mind, I'm not someone who typically gives something up or takes something on during Lent. But for me this year, I don't know, I just think that that might be a good way for me to remember um, a little more, um, a little more humility, a little more um, solemnness. I'm sure there's a word for that, solemnity or something like that. Sorry guys, you got me. Um, but uh, that will help me to remember that this is, that this is a time to reflect, that this is a time to repent, that this is a time to remember my part in Christ going to the cross, to remember that because of my sins, Christ needed to go to the cross so that I could have a right relationship with God, so that you could have a right relationship with God. And I think that this is one way, and I know to some people it's probably kind of silly and a little trivial, um, but for me, I joy in being able to say that on Friday mornings. And so this will be just one little thing that I'm going to do. Um, if you guys have taken on anything, if, if you give something up for Lent or take on a new activity, um, let me know. I'd be so curious to know what you do during this time to really help you stop and reflect throughout these 40 days of Lent, or 47 in our case. For today, though, let's go ahead and get into our devotion. Um, just as a reminder, it is Thy Will Be Done by Ted Schroeder. The Bible verse that we're going to look at for today is Genesis 16, verse 2, and it says, And Sarai said to Abram, Behold now, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go into my servant. It may be that I shall obtain children from her. Abram, soon to be Abraham, and his wife knew God's promise, even though Sarai thought that the promise of a child was laughable. They simply tired of waiting for God to fulfill his promise. We can do it ourselves, they thought. And the solution, a child by Hagar, turned out to be a disaster. If you want to read more about that, if you can't bring that story to mind off the top of your head, go to Genesis 16. Guys, it's a doozy. Seriously. As children, we thought all good things were slow in coming. Summer vacation, Christmas, our birthdays, and so many other things. As we mature, we learn that instant gratification is not always available. But one would expect God to do better. He is, after all, God. Why is he so slow to answer? Maybe we should do it ourselves. When we do, the result is often disastrous. With Peter, we affirm, the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient toward you not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. We are short of patience when God's answer is no or wait. God may not give us the stuff we pray for, especially selfish stuff, but he does give, as promised, life and salvation in Jesus Christ. We are renewed every morning by his forgiving love in Christ Jesus. We go forth with strength and the purpose of God's will. Let's pray. Wise and loving God, we are often impatient when we don't quickly get what we want. Forgive us and help us to depend more fully on you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Okay, my friends, I will see you tomorrow. Bye.